In this envelope, I've got 300 million year old fossils. This is a trials. And this is where they live, inside of rice paddies and in ephemeral pools. And in this video, we're gonna grow them from just eggs. And in order to grow them, we needed the right habitat. So I filled up a tank with sand. They dig through this and they lay their eggs in it eventually. But the tank looked quite boring. So we had to add some stones. With a hardscape added, I could add some containers because the traps needed to be born in a tank separate from the main system because they needed spring water. We had four separate containers because we were going to have four species, an English one, a Spanish one, an American, and one from Mongolia. In order to be successful, we had to add some Indian almond leaves and some English oak leaves because they break down in water. As they broke down, they create the right environment for bacteria and microfauna to grow. And to seed the microfauna, I added an old Anubius leaf, and all of this would feed the triops. All I had left to do was to add the sand. Now this sand contained the eggs of the triops, because after they lay their eggs, the ephemeral pools they live in dry out and the triops die. So, over millions of years, they've evolved to be able to dry out completely when they're in their egg stage which makes it very easy for us because you can just buy them in a packet and they can last up to 20 years. Now we had everything ready for the containers, we had to do a bit more on the tank. Like the containers, I was going to add some leaves to the tank so it was ready for the trials when they wanted to move in. And then once the leaves were in, we could add a little bit of water. This water would come up to the rim of the specimen containers the trials were going to be born in. This would allow me to heat the entire tank, instead of heating each container individually. And now all I had to do was wait for the water to clear and for the eggs to hatch. And a day and a half later they did. And the Mongolian trials were first to appear and they immediately began eating the decaying leaves. They were so tiny and so hard to focus on. I was just hoping the others were going to be a little bit bigger. They weren't, however. The American ones were about the size of a grain of sand, so roughly the same size. And unlike the Mongolian ones, they didn't really seem to like free swimming as much and stayed more on the sand or on the sides of the glass. Despite hatching at the same time, our English tribes were still in their nuclei stage and looked very different to the other triops. They were seemingly more abundant as well. We only had those three hatch, so I added some spirulina to them to make sure they had a little bit of food. And by day three, you could now start to see them a lot clearer. There was only one American left because he'd eaten all of his siblings. And you could see he was eating really well as you can actually see into his digestive tract. Which meant he was constantly pooping, but he had the entire tank to himself. So he was gonna grow quick. Seemingly not as quick as the Mongolians though, as we had three quite large individuals at the same time. And they were starving for food, constantly searching, even after I just fed them. And they were now big enough that they could actually move the sand to try and get particulates that were buried. The English ones, obviously being the most polite, seemed less cannibalistic than all the others. Which meant there was millions of them, and they were all foraging quite nicely together. However, with more of them in the system, they were growing a lot slower than the others, because there was more competition for food. And the Spanish triumphs just didn't hatch for whatever reason. So I was going to leave it in there just in case they were a bit late, but I didn't have too much hope. And it was impressive how quickly they grew. I mean, they were literally specks of dust a week ago, but now they were fully formed tadpole shrimp or triumphs. And the American just carried on eating. The English ones had put on a little bit of size, but I didn't want to add any more food because I was worried about crashing the system with the amount there was in there. And the obvious answer to that is to do water changes. But these are very sensitive creatures, 
So I had to do very small water changes quite often. And I couldn't pour all the water in at the same time either. I had to slowly drip it in over the course of hours. And this seemed to really help. And by day 10, the tribes had grown massive and the Mongolian ones were searching for food once again. They were now big enough I could stop feeding them spirulina and start feeding them fish food pellets. And they knew exactly what to do, grabbing a hold of them straight away. Now their food was concentrated into pellets, I felt they were going to grow a lot faster because they didn't have to scavenge around to eat the spirulina. It was impressive how quickly they identified the pellet as food, but I suppose you have to when you only live a couple months. And once our American got a taste of fish food, he didn't stop eating constantly. I had to put several pellets in every single day just for him. But now he was at a size that you could see his eyes, which made him feel a bit more personable. And the English ones, well, they were still lagging behind, but we had millions of them. Unfortunately, I came into the Mongolian ones the next day and he had died. I think he'd had some issues molting and that had caused an ammonia spike that killed all of them. However, on the exact same day, I noticed the Spanish ones had appeared and clearly they'd been alive for a couple of days. I just hadn't noticed. And they were so quick going from one end of the tank to the other. Although I suppose they were probably looking for food, because I'd never actually added food to the tank. They had just been living off the detritus of the leaves. Out of all the trials we had, I think I probably liked these best, because they looked a bit more like horseshoe crabs than all the rest, which I thought was quite cool. Fast forward a week, and everyone was doing really well. Our American, well, he'd grown a hell of a lot. And because he was constantly eating, he was constantly pooping, having it hanging out the back of him the entire time. It was mildly disgusting. However, he had a very cute little face, so I could forgive him. The albino English tribes had also done pretty well too, and they pretty much stripped all of the leaves. So we had to start thinking about where they were going to go. And, well, the tank was quite different from when we first set it up and was now infested with Daphnia. This Daphnia would be a great food source for the tribes and would hopefully reduce cannibalism. And by day 20, they were looking pretty chunky. Our American gentleman seemed to get more and more lazy, now laying down and eating on his back, but it did give us a good opportunity to see their amazing gills. Our English tribes had gotten a lot bigger as well. There was a little bit of cannibalism, so the numbers had thinned out, but each individual was much bigger and much more looking like a tribes. And seemingly a little bit of Daphne managed to get into their enclosure as well, so they were probably eating that. All of this made me think they were probably ready to go into the main tank. And I felt that once they were in here, they'd explode in size because of the sheer amount of food. So, in order not to shock them, I did water changes on them, making sure that the parameters were exactly the same before I added them. First, I added the American, and I felt it was fitting, as he was the largest out of all of the trials. Then, the second largest, the Spanish ones, and we had a couple of these left too. And finally we could add the English ones. And once we'd added them in, they felt pretty small, I mean tiny, but with the abundance of Daphnia, I'm sure they were going to grow quickly. Whilst the English ones were quite happy to be out in the open, the Spanish ones didn't seem to be, and they hid for the first couple of hours. They hid in the rocks and amongst the leaf litter, slowly grazing off the surface.
After a few hours, however, they came out and started to explore the sands. And our American fellow was pretty busy gorging himself on the sides of the rocks, eating up all of the biofilm. And the Spanish joined him soon after. And we could finally see him properly. And he was a gorgeous colour of pink. With black little beady eyes that made me smile every time I saw them. And I spent an unreasonable amount of time watching him bounce up and down as he ate. But over the next coming weeks, everyone grew up a bit bigger. And the English ones, well, they were now massive. And spent most of their time sifting through the sand to see if there was any pellets left. They were significantly pinker than their American cousins, and seemingly less cannibalistic. You could even see their egg sacs through their shells, so they had become fully mature. And, well, as soon as they became fully mature, they ate our American friend. I wasn't too disheartened though, because they were coming to the end of their natural lives. So, it was time to give them a treat before they died. I gave them some apple snail meat, and they seemed to enjoy it. So much so that they pooed in excitement. I think the Spanish ones were still my favourite, as they had that hint of blue on their gills. It just felt like looking at a moving rainbow. And while their mottled brown colours weren't as striking as the other species, I thought they were the most beautiful. And they seem to do a little wave every now and again. And they just look so otherworldly and alien to me. They're beautiful to watch when you got the chance with their bronze tails looking almost steampunk, being covered in spikes. But unfortunately they were coming to the end of their natural lives, and began to degrade quite quickly. The English seemed to last the longest, going on for a few more weeks, along with one trooper of a Spanish one, who just refused to die. And because they didn't have much long left, I gave them a feast of bloodworm. And you could see them carrying it about. And I even managed to catch one of the English ones after his molt, where he was bright pink and kicking. You could even see his molt floating around with water. And Triumph's not the smartest creature. So his instincts told him to kick again and again to make sure his malt was off. And as the English ones died off slowly, they cannibalized each other. It's quite brutal to watch them eat their dead brothers and sisters, but I suppose that's the life of a triumphs. It's one of a harsh reality. Until I was just left with one, and he seemed to enjoy eating the algae off the outside, so I thought I'd give him one final treat. And I gave him some algae wafers. It was probably a little bit overkill, because they probably weighed more than he did. He seemed to enjoy them in his last moments. So, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.